Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 10 uh, for February the 6th, 2022 uh, from our Faith Pathway Adult Bible Studies. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Justice and Adversity. And our topic for today uh, is entitled Speaking Truth to Power. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Our background scripture is taken from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12. And we'll be studying today from uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 9, and verses 13 through 15. Our key verse reads, Nathan said to David, You are the man. That's taken from 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7a, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today um, for this lesson is to explore how sin's consequences extend beyond the individual and bring hurt to God and others. Secondly, to address and call attention to sin uh, and the injustices that occur as a result. And thirdly, to admit your sins, ask God's forgiveness, and make godly choices. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, A Bold Confrontation. And the second outline is entitled, Gracious Justice. And so as always, we thank and praise God for a privilege, this privilege, an opportunity to be able to share uh, our Sunday School lesson with you. We always want to encourage you to um, get your Bible um, and uh, something to take some notes and um, follow along with us as we engage this historical account one that I'm sure that we know uh, very well. We certainly pray, hope and pray that uh, all is well uh, with you and your families and we certainly are continuing to pray for one another as we see these difficult days unfold. But I want to read just a little bit of this biblical context for this lesson from um, the Adult Quarterly and then I want to read a little bit from our lesson standard. But uh, to be clear, uh, at the time of, of today's lesson, uh, the, the Israelite army uh, was fighting the Ammonites. Uh, you can see some reference in Genesis 19, uh, verse 38, and Deuteronomy uh, chapter 2, verse 19. And we want to date this uh, account to around 990 uh, B.C., and we want to keep in mind that as we look at this lesson uh, with a good general directing his army, a king could stay home and take care uh, of administrative concerns or personal matters. Uh, king David had such uh, a man, uh, Joab. Uh, we can see some reference for him in Second Samuel chapter 8, uh, verse 16. And then just a little bit more context here. Um, David's decision to remain in Jerusalem was unusual because he usually accompanied and commanded his army during battles. But uh, our text does not reveal uh, a specific reason for his behavior. But his choice led to disastrous spiritual and personal effects. Uh, David's actions in this text were a blatant abuse of his authority as king to satisfy his sinful lust. So adultery, murder, deception, lies, and the loss of fellowship with God were products of his sin. Uh, so it was God who had given David the political power to rule, so his sin was ultimately against him. Consequently, God confronted him through the prophet Nathan uh, in an act of justice tempered by uh, divine grace. 
So I would encourage you to go back to 2 Samuel chapter 10 uh, and read that account uh, and continue on through 2 Samuel chapter 11 and then ultimately all of 2 Samuel chapter 12 just to give you a broad scope of what happened or to review uh, what happened. I just want to uh, unpack this term sin as it relates to this lesson and as we understand it it, it is it is law breaking right it's, it's a it's a overreach or a presumption if you will within an individual to overstep uh, God's command this is the sin that David commits he oversteps right uh, he breaks laws God's commandments if you will uh, laws and commandments that he knew uh, very well that he was uh, tagged uh, even as a king to to educate the people of Israel and Judah uh, uh, in regard to uh, God's expectations um, of his people as as well as uh, those who were in leadership so uh, I want to pick this up from uh, our second our first outline second Samuel chapter 12 uh, verses 1 through 9 and I, I want to just highlight the fact that this is a parable if you will uh, that Nathan is about to uh, reveal to David parables were not um, just reserved for Jesus day uh, but a parable uh, simply means of putting alongside for purposes of comparison uh, and also new understanding and so what what a parable is intended to do is give uh, an individual or a group of people uh, a vision of life right and this is what uh, is taking place here so let's look at this second Samuel chapter 12 verses 1 through 9 and I want to read this from the NIV uh, translation the Bible says the Lord sent Nathan to David uh, when he came to him he said there were two men in a certain town one rich and the other poor the rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle verse 3 but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had brought he raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Verse 4. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the you lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him verse 5 David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan as surely as the Lord lives the man who did this must die verse 6 he must pay for that for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity Verse 7, Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. Verse 8, I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Verse 9. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. So we get at verse 9 at the end of this parable what happened right this was a blatant conspiracy if you will by David um, uh, to take Uriah uh, uh, put him on the front lines of the battle knowing 
uh, uh, conspiring, if you will, uh, that this man would get killed on the front line of this battle. He had already taken Uriah's wife, right, Bathsheba. He saw her. Uh, he lusted for her. Uh, uh, he slept with her. Um, he fathered uh, a child with her. Uh, but he set this man up, Uriah, to be killed. And God now has watched this event, uh, overseen uh, uh, with his divine eye, and God has sent Nathan, this prophet, uh, to David to confront him, to speak truth to power, if you will, to, to help David understand that this is not the vision of life that God had for him. Uh, and so God goes through a very extensive list of things that he did for David. Uh, how he had blessed him, how he had anointed him, uh, how he uh, raised him, if you will, and, and put him over his people. And, and David has engaged in something uh, that he should have known uh, 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 from the very fact of how the Lord uh, took him from uh, 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 from the from the field tending sheep all the way up to be king over Israel and Judah, and now David has uh, sinned against God. And so, this is a very important lesson for us uh, in this historical account because we are. Uh, we have witnessed this kind of thing where, uh, uh, if I can use this term, where we have seen people set other people up. Uh, and that's what David did. He set this man, Uriah, up uh, not only to fight in this battle, but he put him, if you go back and read the account of the scriptures that I gave you from uh, 2 Samuel chapter 10 and flow all the way through to the 12th chapter, you can see uh, what his intentions were uh, because he took this man's wife and he had no intention of doing the right thing uh, 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 by Uriah. And so now Uriah has been killed, right? He has died in this battle. And God is probing uh, David through this prophet you know and essentially asking him why did you do this right but the the, the months that passed during Bathsheba's pregnancy and the subsequent birth of their child may have given David the impression that he had gotten away with his sin but the confrontation in 2 Samuel chapter 12 occurred at least nine months later. David uh, had used the authority God gave him to satisfy a lustful desire, which, which he attempted to cover up, right? As king of Israel, David did not have absolute power, but he was required to submit to God and was bound to obey all the commandments given to Israel. And so you, you can see the fact that, that uh, God does not excuse those in authority to do or to commit sin. As a matter of fact, he holds them at a higher standard, if you will. Uh, I believe James in the third chapter gives some reference here. But, but I, I took a look back into this impression that this... Uh, commentary talked about uh, it doesn't we don't know if if David had this impression that he thought he had gotten away with it but he was certainly conducting himself uh, 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 in a way that he had no intention of, of, of talking to God he had no intention of confessing about this thing but this was interesting in, in, in uh, Israel's day if you go uh, 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 to the book of Ezekiel chapter 12 verses 21 through 28 what you'll see uh, 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 Israel had a proverb if you will in, in, during this time 
uh, during the prophet Ezekiel and what what they would do and I, I just want to just summarize here uh, without going through all of these verses here uh, when a prophet came to speak to them uh, uh, about a particular matter and we should always remember that when prophets appeared in, in Israel's history uh, 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 it was rarely ever good right it was always uh, 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 God sending someone to get his people back on track and so in Ezekiel's time uh, uh, the, the children of Israel they were uh, engaged in predicting if you will so if, if they were if they received a prophecy uh, from the man of God they would calculate how much time the fulfillment came uh, for that prophecy and so what they were doing uh, uh, in essence was abusing the grace of God and they would not stop they would say in essence well from the last time he prophesied and uh, 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 we had a little bit of time to keep doing our thing so we'll just keep doing our thing if you will keep breaking God's commandments and we won't change uh, we'll give it the prophecy time to fulfill itself and that would in essence give us time to be better sinners if you will if I can just summarize this way but God stepped in uh, uh, in the 12th chapter of the book of Ezekiel and I would hope that courage that you would read that uh, at verse 21 through verse 28 God put a stop to that proverb to that way of thinking right and God saw that they were not respecting the prophet and the word that came from the prophet so what God said was there won't be any more delay right in 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 the prophecy that I give you uh, uh, or the commandments that I give you and the fulfillment I'm gonna start exercising since you all want to abuse uh, 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 my grace I'm gonna start fulfilling it the day I tell you right the day I send the prophet is the day I act I'm not gonna allow you to continue to exploit the grace that I'm giving you and I'm, I'm sending you a word from the prophet to correct you and you have found a way to manipulate what the prophet tells you uh, 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 with the fulfillment of that prophecy so I'm going to put a stop to that proverb so you can see this kind of mentality here where a commentary here may imply that uh, David thought in these months that he had gotten away with this thing right until the prophet shows up and David has no idea that that that's the day of reckoning if you will that's the day uh, 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 this is not going to be something about somebody else this is going to be about you and the Lord is specific in and through this prophecy here that uh, uh, I know exactly what you did I know exactly what you were thinking I know exactly how you conspired to do this thing but you know a prophet's role in Israel was to encourage the king to fulfill the obligations of the law and to rebuke them when they fail so a prophet has more authority if you will than the king uh, because God is using them in a way to uh, 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 to help shape the life that he wants the king to live right you'll see a, a little bit more reference in Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter 1 when the Lord called him but Nathan was in a precarious position because prophets were sometimes executed uh, if they did not tell the kings what they wanted to hear so although Nathan was under divine authority his approach was to use a case study uh, instead of direct confrontation so you can see the challenge here of speaking truth to power you can see the challenges even for us today of uh, speaking truth to power saying something to someone who is above us who has authority but there is a way to do that right and so uh, uh, if you can see the approach here uh, taken into account that that uh, uh, Nathan doesn't want to uh, uh, lose his life he doesn't want to anger the king but he is under divine authority to tell uh, David 
uh, uh, what he has done wrong and 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 this is how God chose to use Nathan so uh, uh, but Nathan's story contrasted a poor man possessing one precious lamb with a rich man who had an abundance of livestock right so instead of taking one of his own uh, uh, one of his many lambs from his flock the rich man abused his power and took the more the poor man's pet and served it uh, as the main course for the traveling guests isn't that something David could have had any woman that he wanted God says that here if you needed something else based on the history that 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 you have established with me or that I have established with you I would have given you anything that you asked for right you didn't have to take someone else's uh, 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 wife or someone else's uh, a loved one you could have just come to me but many times this is how we supplement right this is how we go around or we overstep who we are and 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 what we are and we do things and we are all guilty of this right I don't want to just uh, uh, pin David to the wall as though this is not something that we all should recognize we have all sinned and come short right of God's approval of the glory of God and so uh, uh, but it is a, a, a good reflection to see that God sees everything that we do right he knows our intentions he knows all about our thoughts even before we entertain them God knows our approach to various things and so this happens and I, I, I like the fact that this book is under the category of history it's not just Israel's history it's a man's history it's humankind's history and we see this thing playing out every single day every time we turn on the news this same type of abuse is coming out into the open and and and, and we're, we're going to share some scripture with you but we also want to help you to understand if we're going to get help right the same thing that God is uh, 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 sharing here through Nathan uh, God is is setting the stage that David should have come to him right this is the take home and we and we'll talk about that but after a uh, 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 Nathan explains this thing to David. David was outraged by Nathan's story and quickly demanded restitution. Watch this. And the death penalty for this abuse of power. David says in effect that this person who did this, right, should die. Right? He's setting the stage. So he knows right from wrong. He knows law breaking, right? He knows the sin of, of this parable uh, uh, but he doesn't think it applies to him until Nathan reveals to him you are the man I want you to look at uh, Exodus chapter 22 uh, verse 1 but by God's authority uh, 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 Nathan applied the meaning of this story to David the prophet set David's sin against God's benevolent goodness to him God had abundantly blessed David and would have given him even more if he had gone into prayer. You know, prayer is the key, right, for the believer. Prayer is the key and our faith unlocks that door, right? We have to go in prayer about the things that we uh, uh, want to do. And all of our desires uh, 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 I, I would just uh, say to you, uh, put it this way, are not godly, right? Some of the desires that we have are selfish. They have nothing to do with God getting the glory. But, but, but in our nature, we want to be satisfied, right, from time to time. We see this play out, right? This is an internal struggle, right? But David actions prove that knowing the word does not always lead to obeying it 
his sinful behavior also shows the necessity of believers continuous spiritual growth God's use of Nathan as his agent of confrontation challenges us right to be willing and available to confront those who abuse power what also give you Colossians chapter 4 verse 1 those of us that are in authority uh, believe God has called us to a place of authority we have an authority over us right we are not the ultimate authority it doesn't matter what your title is right there is a God that sits high and looks low uh, right God has never given you a, a, a authority over his right you have your authority because of him right whether you recognize that or not that's a different matter but God has established here uh, with David through Nathan that I anointed you right you had a spiritual endowment directly from me he says I gave it to you I anointed you king over Israel then he goes on to say, I delivered you from the hand of Saul. You know, uh, uh, Saul was a great antagonist of David. Uh, uh, tried to kill him on multiple times, but, but God spared him. So I, I gave you rest. I believe one account says uh, uh, from God to David, I gave you rest on every side, right? So God is, is recounting this to him. He says, I gave you, I gave, this is grace. You didn't earn anything. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Look at the potential of prayer. Look at the potential of taking our case before the Lord and allowing him to help us right so Nathan's less confrontational but effective approach is one to consider using politically believers have the right and responsibility to use that venue to confront and remove uh, 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 leaders guilty of abusing their power spiritually we have God's word and the standards he has established uh, in it to use within his church I would just share this with you today don't let the first thing come up come out right when you are challenging or you seek to say something to someone uh, uh, to correct or to rebuke or to censure if you will or to reprimand a particular sinful behavior ask God to word your mouth right uh, this is important uh, 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 Nathan has been armed by God right we don't we don't know how long this account took but he is armed prior to approaching David he has the words in his mouth and we get that from our first outline the Lord sent Nathan to David and when he came to him he said so so God have armed has armed Nathan with an approach right with the words uh, uh, to to allow David to to speak to his his situation out of his own mouth so uh, uh, and this is one of the strategies that Jesus used uh, in his day when he couldn't talk to individuals on a certain spiritual level he broke it down in a parable so he could relate to them and they could relate to what he was saying and the, 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 the fact that Jesus was trying to move them to a higher plane in life. So there is a way to do things. There is a way to speak. There is a way to confront. But I want you to look at at your leisure Psalm 103. I'm going to give you quite a few scriptures here. Uh, uh, so be prepared for that. I want you to look at them at your leisure as you approach this lesson. Psalm 103 verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, verses 1 through 12 is very unique in, in, in what Paul was doing in recounting some of the mistakes of the people of Israel. And Paul essentially is saying here, 
avoid Israel's mistakes, right? Israel made a lot of mistakes. It wasn't just David, right? A lot of the Israelites died challenging God, overstepping, if you will, uh, uh, murmuring and complaining and all of these kinds of things. You'll see that in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. I also want to give you the book of Numbers chapter 11, verse 4 and verse 34. Uh, I also want to give you Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, back to the book of Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 9, uh, the book of Psalms 106, uh, verse 29, and I want to give you a very familiar one, uh, and I'm actually going to read this one from the book of Romans um, uh, chapter 6. And I want to go down to uh, verse 21 and we'll read to verse 23 and then we'll move on. Romans chapter 6, if you will go there uh, uh, there with me uh, real quick. And then we want to look at uh, verse 21. The Bible says, what fruit did you then, uh, did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. And this is the familiar one. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the sin that David committed according to the law he could have and should have been put to death right and he speaks it out of his own mouth David does he said whoever did this thing should die right he must die right so God is still sparing us still spared David right and we'll see a little bit later on what God was trying to get out of this situation right uh, uh, for David as king he has installed him uh, for a particular reason and David has fallen short yes David is a man after God's own heart we know that all too well but he is still prone to uh, 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 if he is not guided or governed by the word of God he will be sinful right he will break God's law he will overstep you will overstep I will overstep right so we want to make sure that we put this in context so the question is asked why did God delay confronting David for his sin that's a very good question right I want to give you Isaiah chapter 52 verse 5 and also Ezekiel uh, chapter 36 verse 22 and we're going to answer this question uh, and it, it's very good that God uh, 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 delays, right? It's a very good thing for us. It was a very good thing. God could have uh, taken David's life, right? He could have taken David when he was conspiring to do this thing. Uh, after Uriah's death, God could have taken him. Uh, certainly after he committed this act with Bathsheba, another man's wife, uh, God could, you, you, you get where I'm going here? It, it, there are so many pivotal points in our lives where God could have taken us. And he would have, he would have caught us dead to right in sin. And we would have been lost. We would not have been able to embrace the gift of God, right, which is eternal life right through Jesus Christ we would have never seen that day come to fruition we would never be saved individuals but thank God that 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 he delays right he delays his action his action for a particular reason our second outline is talking about gracious justice this is taken from 2nd Samuel chapter 12 uh, verses 13 through 15 and I want to read this again from uh, the NIV translation then David said to Nathan I have sinned against the Lord Nathan replied the Lord has taken away your sin 
you are not going to die. Just want to pause here because this is what the Lord wants from us. It, it's a confession, right? The first epistle of John, chapter 1. If we do something, if we confess, right? If we confess our sins, John says over there that God is, is, is faithful, right? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And one of the challenges uh, uh, that I've seen uh, over the years is, is, is certainly in, 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 in church affairs is unconfessed sin. The problem with this situation with David, he had not confessed it. He had not talked about it to God. And so God is sparing his life after he has killed someone. And, and, and sometimes we think that we have done stuff, things uh, in our past that, that, that we are unreachable, that God cannot. Listen, they, they sang a song years ago, said, if he have to reach way down, way down, Jesus will pick you up. David uh, needs God to reach way down and cover murder. Look at the grace of God, people. God is forgiving murder. God is forgiving adultery. God is forgiving the conspiracy. Right? So don't ever think that you have sinned in a way that God has not seen or that God is unable to save you from. Right? So... David still has to atone, if you will, because of the laws of God. He still has to pay, if you will, for his mistakes, right? He still has to go through the process, right, of God's forgiveness, right? And we'll see that in this text. So, verse 14, but because... By doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. This is the Lord's decision, right? Um, verse 15, and after David had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had born to David, and he became ill. We know from the account that... Uh, that God took the child, right? In the in I in the King James version, I want to read it here because I want to make a point and then we'll move on to close. How be it, right? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. That's why I gave you Isaiah 52 uh, verse 5 in Ezekiel 36 uh, verse 22 because God is concerned about his name one of the things that I think is important for us to understand as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, we are uniquely connected to one another and what I mean by that is that uh, 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 if you look at at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 26 and I, I want to read that to you because it will help under it will help underscore what God was concerned about, why God needed to act in such a way, why God was concerned about his namesake. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty six. Paul is talking here, it has been talking about over here about the body, right? And the, the uniqueness of the body of Christ. But verse 26 says this, And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Because we are connected as brothers and sisters in Christ, when we sin, right, it is an injury to the brotherhood that we belong to to the spiritual fraternity that we belong to. So we all pay a penalty. And you might have heard this over the course of your life. Uh, uh, when one Christian falls, 
the perception is is that none of the Christians are any good. You get where I'm going. Uh, so we'll we'll discard Christianity or we'll disregard the people of God or, or the church house or the body of Christ because we saw one brother fall. So so we have to be mindful that. When one of us suffers, right? Look at what has happened with David, right? He is the leader, right? He is the king, and so what? Are, what are the implications uh, 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 when the leader, when the leader falls? What are the implications for the people? I want to give you that biblically when we get to that point, because I think it's important for us to understand that God is concerned right what david did it it would it would cause uh, uh 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 in the king james version an occasion to the enemies the enemies of the lord to blaspheme right to to account or say that god is not worthy to be served well look at this guy if he could do this then i don't want to have any part uh, 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 with the church, I don't want to have. So this is the kind of thing that 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 God is trying to get across uh, uh, to David through the prophet, uh, as he seeks to establish with David a vision of life. Keep in mind, we all will uh, 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 fall, right? We all have the capacity at some point uh, to 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 fall, if you will. Uh, uh, so the enemy's excuse, right, is not going to help them, right? But this is the way that 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 we sort of uh, uh, misunderstand our role, right, in the body of Christ and how connected we are, and how our sinfulness affects uh, not just our uh, uh, physical families, but our spiritual families. I hope that makes sense for you uh, today. But I want to move. As we uh, uh, seek to close, uh, that David realized that God had complete knowledge of his sin, right? Complete knowledge. God's judgment of David would be proportionate to his sin against Bathsheba and Uriah, right? So, the taking of another man's wife and murder were both punishable by execution even for a king. So God's verdict was strict, but he spared David's life as an example of his benevolent grace. David received the opportunity. This is the key here of this conviction through the prophet Nathan to restore fellowship with God. But the consequences of a family plague by turmoil remained. His sin did not just affect his personal life, it also affected God's reputation. Right? That's what we shared earlier. So David's sin was cause for God's enemy to blaspheme and dishonor him. So as divine discipline, God was not going to allow the child Bathsheba um, bore him to live. So but again, uh, uh, I want to give you, because we asked the question about uh, God's delay. Uh, we asked, we talked about why spiritual leaders uh, um, should be held accountable and confronted uh, by abusing their power. I would ask you to read Proverbs 29, verse 2. right? And so this is a great lesson. Uh, and it's important when we sin right if we genuinely confess and repent this is you know sin breaks that fellowship repentance restores that fellowship with God if we genuinely confess and repent as I said earlier God is faithful and just uh, to forgive us that's the first epistle of John verse uh, chapter 1 verse 9 so this is possible because uh, uh, God gave his precious lamb his son as the sacrifice for our sins and for that we should praise honor and obey him in gratitude that's our response right 
Let's pray, saints. Father God, we thank you for who you are and for what you do. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the power of this lesson, illustrating the weakness and the frailty of mankind. Father, we see that you have forgiven David in this account. We see in our, per, in our own personal mirrors that you have forgiven us for our sins. And for that, we are thankful. We thank you for your unmerited grace, your undying mercies. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in covering our lives that you have hidden us in the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God. And we realize that we have disgraced ourselves over the course of our lives we have disgraced your name uh, uh, by our sinful conduct but thanks God for Jesus who uh, uh, took that uh, guilt and that shame and that sin and it was nailed to the cross Father, we thank you for that sacrifice that covered uh, our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. And ultimately, we, we will be taken uh, uh, from the very uh, presence of it, God. And we just thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters in prayer. Father, we just ask you to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, we need a cleansing, a deep cleansing, O oh God, from our head to our feet, that we might remain blameless in the day. Father, we just thank you for all these blessings that you have bestowed upon us and what this lesson has caused us to see. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. I hope that you will read this account, study this account, and uh, follow through on the scriptures that we share. We pray that God will strengthen you wherever you're weak. All right. We need to talk to God about our weaknesses uh, that his power may rest upon us. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.